In example one, we're going to solve a system of linear inequalities. If you start by looking at negative x plus y is less than or equal to 1, if we had just this one equation, we already know how to solve this problem. Since I see this equal sign, you're going to graph a solid line. And then second, you'd have to decide, uh, well, what does the less than mean? Do I shade below or do I shade above the line? The only difference here is we now consider this other line at the same time. So step one is going to be, I see that there are equal signs on both of these inequalities, so I want to graph the first line and I want to graph the second line. Let's start with negative x plus y is equal to 1. Okay, I want to actually get a solid line for this graph. Uh, I think this one's easy enough just to, let's say, add x to both sides. I'll write this as, you know, y is equal to, I'll put x plus 1 just because this is very simple to graph. It has a y-intercept of 1, and the slope of 1 means that we go over 1 and up 1, and my equation is going to go through all of these points here, so let me sketch that. All right, so now I have my first equation, but I have this second equation to consider, so let's look at that one too. I would like to graph y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 7. So this one being written in y equals mx plus b form means, okay, I'm going to take the same approach where I'm going to put the y-intercept at 7. And the fact that the slope is negative 1 half means the graph goes down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. Okay, these graphs actually meet up at this point. And I'll put a few other points on here and then get a sketch of this line as well. All right, so step one is done. I graphed the first line and I also graphed the second line. Now we're left dealing with, well, what does the inequality portion of this mean? Uh, last time when it was just one single line, it was very easy. It was just two things to consider, either below the line or above the line. But now that we have two lines, and the fact that they intersect means there's four places to consider. The answer could be one of these four places and exactly one of them. So that's our goal. Um, which region works. And the way to do that is to take a point from every single region, plug it into the system, and see what we end up with. All right, so hopefully I can, um, you know, guess it in either the first or second try. So I'm going to start with this region down here. I'm going to choose the point 0, 0 as a test point and see if it works in both of those uh, inequalities. So we're going to test the point zero, zero. Does it work for both? If I put it in the first inequality, I get negative zero plus zero is less than or equal to one, which is zero is less than or equal to one. So, okay, we're good for the first equation. If I plug it into the second equation, I get zero is less than or equal to negative one half times zero plus seven. This simplifies to 0 is greater than or equal to 7, uh, no, th this is false. So unfortunately, this test point that I chose is no good. It means this entire region cannot work. All right, so the answer is not here. Um, I'm just going to pick another region. Maybe I'll move over to this one here. I can use any point that appears in here. So how about the point 10, 5? I'm going to use this as my next point. So let's test the point 10, 5. I'll plug it into the first inequality. Let's see what we get. So that is negative 10 plus 5. Is that less than or equal to 1? And that's negative 5 is less than or equal to 1. That's clearly true, so we're good there. I'll now plug it into the second inequality. So I put 5 in place of y. Is that greater than or equal to negative 1 half times 10 plus 7? Okay, that's 5 is greater than or equal to negative 1 half times 10 is negative 5. And if I add that negative 5 to 7, I get 2. Okay, this is true. This test point at 10, 5 made both of these inequalities true. That means every point in this region has to work. So I'm going to go ahead and shade that in. There is my answer on the graph. It's that shaded region along with the two lines as well. 
Um, what you could do next is, well, you know, is my answer over here? You could, if you want to be careful, you could take like 0, 5, plug that in. You could also take 5, 10, substitute that as well. Uh, it should be false for both of those as well, but this is my answer and that's it. And let's look at one more example, this time where I don't have an equal sign on one of my equations. And again, all that means is when we go to graph this thing, I'll just use the dotted line instead of a solid line. So let's start by graphing 5 minus 2y is less than 1. Actually, this equation doesn't even have an x in it. So that's kind of different, but all right, let's uh, give it a shot. So I need to graph 5 minus 2y is equal to 1, but I'm going to use a dotted line when I actually put it in the xy plane. So the fact that there's no x in here means I'm going to solve this for y. It shouldn't be too difficult to do. I'll subtract 5 from both sides. I get negative 2y is equal to negative 4. And when I divide both sides by negative 2, I get that y is equal to positive 2. So that's just a horizontal line. The fact that there's no x's in there means that y is just equal to a number. So at y is equal to 2, I'll put a dotted line here. So there's my line for the very first equation. It's horizontal, that's good. I now wanna graph the line 2x plus y is equal to four. I'll actually use a solid line here because there's an equal sign in the inequality. Uh, I guess you could use an x and a y intercept here, that'd be fine. If I solve for the x intercept, that means I'm putting zero in place of y. That gives me two x is equal to four. Dividing both sides by two gives me that x is equal to two. So I have my x-intercept of 2. And if I want the y-intercept, I will put 0 in place of x. That one is even easier because you just get that y is equal to 4. OK, that's perfect. And I just need to draw the line that goes between those two points. OK, now that I have both equations sketched, I can see that they actually did intersect at this point here at uh, 1, 2. But uh, all right, now I need to know, well, which region am I shading in? It's going to be here, here, up here, up here. Um, I kind of like, again, just going back to 0, 0 as my starting point, simply because uh, this will simplify nicely in both inequalities. Let's try it out. OK, so I'm going to test 0, 0. In my first inequality, I get 5 minus 2 times 0. Is that less than 1? And no, that is not true. Because you get 5 is less than 1, this is false. So actually, unfortunately, uh, that's no good. So let's pick another region. I, I think what I'm going to do is, OK, let's see. This whole region is no good. I think I'm going to use the point zero 0.03. I mean, that is in this region over here, so I'm going to try that. So if I test zero 0.03, it has a 0 in it, which is nice. So test zero 0.03. Let's see what happens this time. OK, we get 5 minus 2 times 3. Is that less than 1? That's 5 minus 6. That's true. Neg negative 1 is less than 1. All right, great. All right, now let's plug this into 2x plus y is uh, less than or equal to 4. So you get 2 times 0 plus 3. Is that less than or equal to 4? That simplifies to 3 is less than or equal to 4. OK, that's true. All right, perfect. The point 0, 3, which was right here, worked. It means that all of these points must work. I will shade in that region. That means my answer occurs in that one spot. 